testing? Okay, good. <laughs> Good evening. We're getting ready to start in about a few seconds. Just a reminder to put your phones on vibrate, please, so that we have no interruptions. I love your phone case. Bright green. You cannot miss it. <laughs> yes. Good idea. Right. Good evening. For those of you that don't know me yet, I am Monifa Brathwaite. I am the Public Information Officer for the Virgin Islands Port Authority. I'd like to thank you all for coming to our second community meeting regarding the proposed construction of a community park at the Port Authority-owned property at Eni Pond here in Cruise Bay, St. John. This is our second meeting. We met here before in September. And we gathered a list of your, your ideas and your feedback and what you would like to see at the park. And we had our consultant here with us, Moffat and Nickel, and he took down all the ideas and combined them with our ideas. And tonight, we have a rendering of what we propose the park is going to look like. And we hope that we meet a happy medium between what we like and what you want. Um, now I'll turn the mic over to our executive director, Mr. Colton Dell, and he will be followed by Preston Beyer, our director of engineering, who will provide more details and a uh, vision of the rendering. Good evening and thank you. Thanks, Monifa, and the staff that we have uh, present with us this evening. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to lay out exactly how we expect to proceed tonight. Um, I would give you some small introduction and then between Preston by the Director of Engineering and Mr. All Tamil, the senior engineer, he's been the one primarily kind of on the ground here, back and forth with these things. Uh, we take great pride in what we're doing because we were able to 
listen to the community, come have conversations with them, get some feedback from time. There's some of you who continue to call us or provide information. I know um, we held a meeting recently in St. Thomas with a couple of the stakeholders, uh, the representatives right here in St. John. So at the end of the day, though, none of us, to include the Port Authority, none of us going to have 100% of what we think this ought to be. So that's why, uh, from time to time, we have got to compromise. Uh, the, the landmass in which we're dealing with is only but so much. So we have to look for the greater good, not for just one group, one individual, but how the masses of people in St. John can really uh, benefit. A uh, couple things that we must be clear about. None of us, as we like, I like to come up here, enjoy the festival, like most of you. None of you today could believe that the footprint that you have for the festival that goes on is adequate. It's not safe when we have hundreds upon hundreds of people in that very small area. We have that property there. Some of it is fill land that was there for a very long time. How we do build with modern construction today, we are finding ways in which we could utilize just about our entire property. We've got to think on how we're going to uh, you know, have, do, do um, how our energy is going to be provided as well. But it's a whole host of things, and as we get into this uh, discussion this evening, uh, you'll have a chance to, to speak. A couple of people in the community would have a, a chance to provide some of their input and information based on what we have done. But just bearing in mind, none of us, none of my staff would allow anybody to disrespect them. We're not going to disrespect you. If you want to speak, we'll allow you to speak, but that will be done orderly. I, um, I always tell people, reasonable people could look at the same thing and disagree on it, but we disagree in a respectful way because none of us, to include my staff, should be disrespected or abused by nobody. That's one thing, if those of you who know and who have been in meetings with me, that's something I ain't going to put up with at all. So let's just be clear that we here, we, we ain't in no hurry. The villa them might be a little, I, I looked at the among the people in St. John and the villa them might be so loud, but we'll find some place to sleep. So we're going to be here until we exhaust some of your thoughts or questions you might have. But we believe that we have done work so well with the community that we have a product that all of us could, should be able to look back on and say, you know what, this is representative of, of St. John and its people. Uh, and we know we already told you by press release that within the next couple of days, we're starting a project right down here on the dock. These are things that have been, um, you know, needed for a very, very long time. So don't continue to call us, tell us how I miss the boat. It's an inconvenience. There will be inconvenience. Make no mistake, but part of that progress is the inconvenience. The, you, you, none of us should settle up to this day. That's the only facility the Port Authority have that don't have restrooms on it. We can't continue that. That's one of the, I mean, we, do, we have to work within a footprint. If it drizzles now, a few people could hold under the shed. We're going to improve that. If the power goes out, there's no generator down there. We're going to improve that. And we could go on. We have several projects slated for St. John using monies from the St. John Capital Improvement Fund that the Senate um, appropriate. So that's where we're coming from. I think you should sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation that uh, Preston and all will be uh, doing for you guys. And you could make some notes. Please do let the presentation go. I don't know, you know, I, I like us to really make some notes if you want to say something, but let us be able to take care of the presentation so we don't turn into a, a quick question and answer and we're in the middle of what we're doing. So I really thank you. Appreciate all of you who came out tonight. So Preston, you go ahead. with the Virgin Islands Port Authority. Um, I'm going to walk you through a little bit about the project details on what we're here to talk about with the community park at E9 Pond. Um, this project is, has the intent for VIPA to design a multi-purpose facility for community gatherings and cultural events on St. John. Uh, we've put together this schematic plan and, and vision for the park with the assistance of our contractor, Moffat and Nickel. Um, We've received from an act of the legislator and the St. John Capital Improvement Fund $400,000 to fund this design. 
Um, this stage of the design process, we've uh, expended approximately 10% of that. So we're at uh, a 10% design level as well as the funding level that, that we've expended. So expanding a little bit on, on what the executive director and uh, Monifa explained earlier, we, we started this project with a community meeting back in September in this very room where we looked to gather the community and discuss the needs and the wants of this space in Enid Pond. Um, there were meetings that VIPA held after that initial public engagement with the community group. And during that initial meeting, we requested that the community um, organize themselves and come to a consensus on the items that they wish to see as a part of this project. And so those meetings took place uh, in, in St. John, and VIPA was involved in a number of them, uh, both in November and December. And then in January, we, we gathered the thoughts that we had received from that community group and the leaders of that community group and presented what we had seen as a preliminary vision. We came out of that meeting uh, with some additional feedback and we went and we made some changes and, and incorporated them into the overall schematic design. And, and throughout that entire process, VIPA engineering staff, primarily as Executive Director Dow said, Mr. Earl Thomas, was involved in, in that process and kept in close coordination and communication with that community group. Um, and then that brings us up to today, uh, February 9th, 2023, where we're here to unveil the overall plan that, that we've taken all of that feedback incorporated into and, and present a vision for this community park, as well as a conceptual rendering that, that, that shows that park in three dimension to give you an idea of what this project can look like in the future. So as we came into that meeting back in September, there were some project uh, site plans and schematics that had been floating around in the community. And we looked to expand upon the work that had already been taken done by the members of the St. John community on what they wanted to see with this area. And so these are some of the examples and, and breakdown of what we had seen previously and what we had looked to incorporate into our overall vision for, for this park. Some of you may be familiar with this. I, I believe uh, Mr. Steve Black is uh, known to carry this around and, and show people what uh, Enid Pond could look like. And, and we worked very closely to make as much of this uh, incorporated into the vision as possible, also taking into account the community's wants and desires. So as a part of this, and as I've mentioned here a couple of times, there was some community engagement, and there was a group that, that was headed up by Mr. Steve Black and, and Ms. Carmen Wesselhoff. And, and Steve, I was hoping you'd be able to, to join us up here and talk a little bit about what your group did as well. And, Car and Carmen? Okay. Good evening. We just like to say that um, we'd like to thank Director Dow. Director Dow gave us the opportunity to go out and hold our own meetings and decide what the St. Johnians would like to see at this Ine High Pond project. We, ha we held at least five meetings. During that time, just not discussing the Ine High Pond, but we had the opportunity to invite Mr. Raja Merritt, we'd like to thank him. He came out and told us a little about, about the, uh, what's going to happen with the waste treatment plant. We invited Mr. Elroy Hill. He came and told us about his project so that we do not duplicate or submit to the director the same things that they are doing in their project. During that meeting also, we had a subgroup that did a survey in the community that went out to the churches, the school, and certain areas in the community to find out exactly what the St. Jonians want at this Ine High Pan. Follow up, we had a meeting with um, Mr. Preston, Director Dow, and Mr. Thomas, and most of the things that the St. John community is asking for is in the project. It's already incorporated in the project. So um, I must say it's a win-win for St. John. At this time, before I go on, I'd like those persons who are part of this group to stand up and be recognized because we had a cross section of the community. So those persons, if you don't mind, Director Dow and Mr. Preston, those persons who are part of this group, please stand up, Nancy, 
Yelena, Miss Colpat, Teoval, Mormi, all of you, please stand up. This is some of the group. Um, Miss, yes. Yes, you, stand up, please stand up. Amy, Shikima, you all were a part of this group. You are the administrator, but you are a citizen first, so stand up and be recognized. So this is the Kim, stand up. Pam, stand up. <laughs> this is some of the persons that were part of this group that held, were attending the meetings. Um, the subgroup went out, did the survey, and like I said, when the survey came back, a lot of the items that's incorporated in the drawing that you're going to see tonight is exactly what the St. John community is asking for. We went a little further and we also asked for suggestions for the name of the Inihai Pan project. And we got back some cute little names. And one name that stood out in our minds, and it came from the community, was the Passion Fruit Park. I'm not sure if we're going to get that name. Director Dowser, he might try to incorporate it, but I'm just putting it out there to let you know we were even asking for a name for the park. So we'd like tonight to, I'm going to give Steve the mic, to thank all those persons who were involved. We'd like to thank, again, Director Dow. We'd like to thank the Salomons who allowed us to host all our meetings at Meadows Garden. And Steve will tell you what we're going to thank. He has the list. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, it was six meetings that we had, and they were really well attended. We started off uh, having 35 people, and then as time went on, it kind of went down to it, uh, about 20, 22 people. But, uh, but at six, uh, six meetings, and they were well attended, some of them lasted like three hours, and, and we, we talked about it. We were very serious about our input into this. And um, again, I'm, I'm going to uh, couple with, with what Carmen said, that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Solomon of Meadows uh, Garden down there, they um, allowed us to have the meetings there. It was a wonderful location, um, and uh, they were a, a big help through the whole thing. Um, I, I, I want to thank uh, some, some people who have helped to make this, this happen. One was, um, I have to like uh, mention uh, uh, Governor Bryan, because it was meeting with him that, that got the ball rolling. Um, and the person that put that meeting together was uh, Shakima, our island administrator. She, she was wonderful through all of this. Um, uh, 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 Executive Director Dow has uh, been uh, a part of this ever since the RFP went out um, to make this thing happen and has been uh, in touch with us all along. Preston Beyer, um, I, I think we're really gonna be impressed with all the things that, that he uh, was doing. Um, our our go-to guy was uh, Earl. Oh, there he is, hiding in the back. Um, Earl Thomas, who many of you uh, know uh, here on St. John. Joseph Cranston. Also, uh, the the marine uh, manager, um, and uh, our one of the first things that we did is we selected uh, who would be the uh, project leader, and we were so fortunate to get such a good project leader in Carmen Wesselhoff. She worked tirelessly. She scared me tonight because she was the last person in the door. But, uh, but um, she worked tirelessly, keeping everybody in touch with everybody. Uh, uh, you know, hats off to her. Uh, you know, I can't applaud uh, her uh, anymore. I think that, that we're going to see... I think what we're going to see here tonight is, is the start of something that is really exciting for St. John. You know, and it's in the last 20 years, there's only been one capital improvement, and, and that was the gravel parking lot. Now we're going to step up and make something really beautiful and, uh, in this uh, three acres of land inside that gravel parking lot. I think it's going to be something that we're all going to be proud of, and, and it's always been my hope that it could be a springboard to make, th make improvements in, in other areas of our town. Uh, we, we just got 
uh, it, at our last meeting, uh, the Senate President had mentioned that we got our capital improvement funds back. Our capital improvement funds, which has been used for just about any other purpose, is now only going to be used for uh, St. John projects, which is a major thing. Um, it's 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 between uh, 1.3 and and one and a half million dollars a year. So um, this will allow us to make some delightful changes uh, for our town and improve uh, you know our our image and um, how we want to think of ourselves in this town. So um, enough of me. Back to Carmen. No, uh, <laughs> once again, thank you, Director. Excuse me. Thank you, Director Dow and your entire staff for allowing the St. John community to have an input in this Ini High Pond project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve, and thank you, Carmen. Uh, part of the reason that we wanted to have them come here tonight and, and speak to you is because we want this to, to be recognized that this is not just a Port Authority project. This is a project that the residents of St. John have put their time and effort into, and we, we really hope that you understand that and you see that so that when we present and, and we highlight the aspects of this project that St. John wants, we, we want that to be recognized. So again, thank you everybody for your involvement in, in this process. We appreciate your efforts and hope that they've been fruitful and that you see what you want out of this space. Um, Stephen Carmen also mentioned that they had a subcommittee who went out and did some surveys uh, in the community to see what they wanted to um, be incorporated into this space. Uh, and, and this is a, a highlight of what those top 10 wants and uh, requests were. And of those top 10, we've incorporated six of them into our uh, plan for this space. Uh, of those six, we've got the, the green space, the amphitheater, a food court, playground, walking track, as well as a commitment to be utilizing public and local art for the installations in the park. And out of the next top 10, we also hit five of those desires being restrooms, local plants, fenced in, benches and solar panels that are able to be utilized in that space. And so I, I want to kind of open up the, the site plan here and go through some of these concept and programmatic elements um, to identify where that we've, we've really met those requests out of the community. And so this, this is an option for a site plan for this space that is the culmination of all of the, the effort in the community, the effort of the Port Authority, as well as our consultants to put together uh, an overall view and vision for what this space can look like. So it starts with the main entrance up in here where there is a welcome plaza and entrance that comes into a playground area with a lower town green with some green space nearby the playground facility where you then come through uh, a sculptured staircase that brings you up to the main, what we're calling Festival Green. And this is the area that we've identified where the festival uh, could take place here in St. John, moving from the parking lot over by the creek. Uh, we've got two facilities here that are structures. Those will be utilized as potential concession space as well as restrooms. Uh, and you'll see in a rendering a little bit later on um, that we have some flexibility in what we'd like to use those for and what they look like. Uh, whether there's a two-story or one-story, that's all going to come down into the next stages of design uh, as well as any sort of allocation and funding for this project to be constructed. So as then you've got some additional green space off on the side that pulls into a hardscape. Uh, this area is, is really going to be some potential area for other vendors and pop-up installations. Um, you can see that there's a kind of a difference from the, the gravel lot that's out there today uh, and, and changing that over to two consolidated parking areas um, that have give or take 80 spaces that, that are there. Uh, we've also incorporated an amphitheater. Uh, a secondary entrance that can be utilized during performances or events. Um, this amphitheater will have area for storage spaces 
Uh, so things that are utilized typically in performances and events at that amphitheater uh, can ma be maintained on site and locked. And then we have some additional areas that are the screening and flood protection all throughout um, because this is going to need to be an elevated space uh, to incorporate the, the flood zone that, that is right off this area. And um, we've also maintained a small por uh, parcel of this site that's to be used as Port Authority uh, operational space that can then be used for emergency staging in the event of, of any sort of disaster response that may be required. So we've also put together a secondary option then really the only change in this one is in the parking facility. Uh, that would incorporate a two-story parking garage, uh, again, kind of coming back to funding uh, and really giving it a, an opportunity for what St. John wants to use it for. And then in the event that we were to go with this parking structure, uh, we would use solar panels across the top as well as on the, the tops of the structures. So this is going to highlight some of these programmatic elements that we discussed and, and allow there to be kind of a highlight on those focuses. And so these are the, the proposed areas for two potential fencing. One of the items that was requested by the community was that it was fenced in. And so there could be an exterior fence that uh, borders the entire site as well as an interior fence line that can be used if there's to be ticketed events within the Festival Green and if there's to be concerts or events in which uh, there would be a commercial venture that, that was utilizing it. So as I mentioned here, this is the area that we've identified as this, uh, the Festival Green with the event stage, an amphitheater. This component is approximately three quarters of an acre, which is just around double the size that of the existing festival area over in the creek. And this is a layout, a potential layout that incorporates festival vendor booths um, r around the outside. There are 30 booths here, uh, 10 of them that are 20 feet by 10 feet and 20 that are 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, giving some flexibility in the sizing, as well as the potential space um, further in the hardscape where other uh, overflow vendor uh, stands and, and booths could, could take place. We uh, estimate that with the available space that's given here, that, that this could comfortably accommodate over 5,000 people. And then in the event that there were to be um, a concert or any sort of event that was utilizing the event stage that wished to be seated, um, we estimate that that would be around a 4,000 person capacity. So this goes back to the parking elements as well. Again, option one on the left, which is just surface lots. You know, we think we can use this space to get to 50 spaces, and then in the back surface lot, uh, give or take 40 spaces. And then if we were to move with option two, which had a, a second story parking garage, there would be approximately 80 spaces in this garage, as well as 40 in that back surface lot as well. And then in the event that there was a disaster or there was a need for a humanitarian staging area, um, you know, this is the, this is the allocated space uh, transitioning the parking lot into additional overflow staging area as well as the third of an acre parcel that's down here and utilizing the remainder of the dock as necessary, again, in the event that there was a need for this sort of space. And then as promised, uh, we wanted to give an opportunity to see this in, in three dimensions to understand what this could look like in reality and once the, com the construction is complete. And so we've had our consultants put together a rendering of this area um, to, to give life to, to what this project could be in the future.
And so I'll just walk through a couple of these programmatic elements that I walked through during the site plan as well. Over in this area, we have the main entrance, the playground, the open green space, the two facilities that inclu include concession space as well as restroom facilities. You can see the two parking lots, one here, and then the back lot, as well as the continued operations area for the Port Authority and the disaster staging area. And then you've got your festival green with the amphitheater and event stage in the back. This secondary option also shows the fencing along the outside and what that could potentially look like from a nightly closure perspective, as well as uh, in the event that other uh, events needed to, to close that area off. At this point in time, I'd like to open the floor to questions or comments. I'm going to put it back onto the rendering just so people have the opportunity to take a look at it for a little bit longer. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you to the St. John community for allowing me to come up here, spend some time with you guys, you know, collect your input. Met a lot of nice and lovely people, and I hope we did a good job based on your expectations to deliver something that I think personally the St. John community would love. So thank you again. Anybody have any questions for um, the staff at this time? Um, question or suggestion? That you run water pipes around where the vendors will be for the festival so that they could actually have wa running water in their booth for health and sanitary reasons, especially during the time of COVID. That's a done deal. Next. No, we really appreciate it. I mean, matter of fact, I saw them and we should learn from other situations in St. Thomas. They had to literally go back years after to run portable water lines so that the boots could have some water. So that's an excellent suggestion. Anybody else have a question or a suggestion? Yes. My name is Gabriel Nathaniel from Calabash Boom. I'd like to recommend in the naming of the site, in the naming of the site, for you to consider uh, an indigenous St. Jonian, preferable a woman. Let's, um, well, just like I said, and um, it's so interesting you even said that because that's exactly what I told them, uh, I suggested to them when we were meeting that. While Passion Fruit Nice, I believe that somebody that you people, not, not me, see, Senator Potter, Richard in time. But it, it could be, you know, it could, whether it's a combination of stuff or what have you, but I believe that's something that should be left up to the folks of St. John to determine and then go to your favorite politician and let them cement it. But that's what we'll do. I have no objection to what you're saying, but um, yeah. Anybody else have a question? What kind of question, statement co combined. What structure will accommodate the 4,000 um, um, participants or audience or whatever? Over here? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm wondering what you're thinking of for the green in the green space. Question. Grass or? We're open to suggestions, and this is a part of kind of the next steps in the design process. At this point, this is just a conceptual schematic view of what this space can be. Um, there is still the detailed design process that will need to be undertaken for all aspects that includes the finishes, includes the public art, includes all of those items that, that we're kind of hearing as feedback tonight. Um, and, and that is, is definitely something that we will come back to the community with, with, with questions and with requests for recommendations. 
One, one of the things we, um, as we look at this entire process is making sure that whatever we put there can be maintained and well kept. The Port Authority is not into exercise to just build something and then it run down a year from now. And so uh, we have seen all kind of stuff. The Major League have these um, synthetic material, they have the turf, what have you. Something that's durable, unless we expect, you know, we don't know, you know, the water situation won't be what it is. You know, you know what our summers could be like, burning up the grass and on and on. But so we, we would kind of rely heavily um, and trying to get something that's durable that could last and that we could continue, that we could maintain because we will be having people there working there regularly, maintaining, um, you know, the, the facilities there. Anybody else have a question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good evening. Um, the green space, other than the one in the back, those two green spaces, those those are for like lounging, that kind of thing. If you want to bring a chair or something, lounging, is that what that is? I don't know. Sorry. For example, you know, I I don't know if anybody familiar like with the Coconut Grove area in Miami, you go there, whether they have a reggae concert, nobody have no chair. It's a blanket you sit down, you cool out, or you could take your kids down there. You know, it's a community park that you could take your children down there play a game, do something, but no, it's open space. Okay. I think when you were talking about the 10 things, you mentioned that you guys chose six, but one thing I heard was like a walk-in area. Is that there? So the intent is you can kind of see the hardscape around the festival green. That would serve as the walk-in area oh, okay. all, all the way around the green. And so Okay, one, one, of the, one of the things that we want to make sure as we move through this entire process is we to a point where this is just not more concept. Our next step after this is actually getting to the folks. We do have some money set aside now for the actual drawing of, of the, you know, the actual design, the plan. There's going to be X amount of feet and the detail that we need to construct all these things from. So this is, is just your rendering. The next is and what we have this discussion is that once we move from here, we want to go into an actual uh, design of the, the facility. Yes, ma'am? Okay, one more. You mentioned that there would be an interior fence. Where Where is that shown on the map? So it would be right, you, it's kind of difficult to see in this lighting right here, but there's a fence that would go around that festival green as well, with the intent that if there was to be a ticketed event, whether that's a concert or a performance, that is utilizing the event stage that they could have access to both. Okay. Um, there is a, Mr. Okay, just hit that row, hit that row for me. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, regarding the vendor spaces, are they just going to be available to vendors for events, or is this going to be something that they have access to year round? Our intent would be year round. We we believe that this is a facility where every day people is going to be there. Um, how much people we don't know. And just to uh, make sure we understand what's going to happen during a festival or carnival time, it's going to be a little different in as much as at a point we, you, we might want, and that's why Preston used the term pop-up. So we still have the ability to bring in some, something that looks reasonable in the facility in terms of other um, you know, vendors or what have you. But there might be more than likely, and for those of you wondering, the Port Authority, uh, if we're going to have vendors that are going to be down there permanently, there will be some kind of RFP process that you would have to respond to because uh, we wouldn't be able to accommodate everybody who want to do something. And the mistake that we need not make, um, and as long as I could avoid it, there ain't going to be 50 people on this selling T-shirt. <laughs> Cannot be, <laughs> you know. There, there are to be, we, we've got to, do this and uh, the staff and I and even our designer, one of the things we went deeply into, and I'm not picking on no one per se, but the kind of artwork that we have seen in St. John. There must be some area for the artwork to be not just displayed, but to be sold. There must be some place where somebody across the street could really get a sugar apple. There must be, you know, so it ain't gonna be a, just a t-shirt business. And nothing wrong with the t-shirt, let me be clear. 
but at the same time, is no need for us in a culturally, uh, you know, this is St. John, and it has to reflect some of those aspects of, of a place. You know, you don't, I mean, you travel, and yeah, they might go on hamburger and french fries, but they should both get a fried fish and Johnny cake as well, you know? So, so that's our whole intent. Anybody, another row wanted to ask. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Dow staff. Great job for all those that put this together. I was at the first meeting, and I just think you did a great job, you know, taking their ideas and the leadership, and Steve, all the years he's put into it. I mean, he goes way back with this one. So thank you, Steve, Carmen, and the group. Um, the area there where the people are walking it seems to be very large. Of a lot of space being used for that. Is there a reason for that? That's one of my questions. And the other uh, question is the, the green space. It's difficult to have multi-use green space. There's no doubt about it. When you're growing lawns, I mean, on a major league ball field, they do a great job, but they don't have carnival there. They don't have lots of uses in there that, you know, dig it up and, and bring trailers in at the park or whatever, you know. So um, that's going to be a critical decision um, on how, what, what kind of surface that is. Um, you're saying that it's elevated. Um, now, is it elevated in the middle or from the parking lot level or what? It's really the festival green area that's elevated, and so you can see in the fine detail here, the steps that lead up, and then uh, there will be ramp space as well to access it on, on, the, other, on the sides. Remember the area that most of the green is, is where the actual um, fill is from the pond. Right. So that's why between piling and elevating it is right. going to be a must. Right, which is, a, well, I don't know, it's four feet there or more. I'm not quite sure what it is. Yeah. It's at least four, maybe six. Um, which, which also, when you said the double of parking, I don't really have an objection of that to that uh, level because everyone looks down on it. So you're not really ever, you know, looking up at something in front of you. All the hillsides look down, so you don't know whether it's one level, two level. But parking is a thought for the future, absolutely. Because I don't think Cruise Bay, no matter what you do, you're going to get the parking you need for all the, you know, um, the activities that take place in Cruise Bay. So I would support that and the use of the solar panels. The field itself. Is it going to be multi-use? In other words, can soccer players go there and set up and put up their things and our use intent, it? Our intent, I just want to be clear. Um, right now, the Port Authority have a small park, very small park in St. Thomas. People use it all the time. Children could go there after school and, and play, except that depends on what their act, level of activity is at our small park right now. They have to come in. They have to get, uh, um, you know, they have to fill out a document so that they could use the parks. In other words, somebody want to do a soccer league, you can't decide you're going to do a soccer league. It has to be structured that everybody have the ability. So, yes, you could use it every day. But outside of that, if there is something that's organized, then you're going to have to get the authority to allow you to, to do the event because we still have to clean it up. We still have to maintain it and, and the like. So um, I know they have all kind of activity. I, I just passed over there. I know sometimes they, they have like these kids uh, soccer going on, little league, and that's fine. We, that's what we want. We want the people in the community to really engage in, in the property. Well, um, there is no green space for kids to play on St. John. It's the ball field by the park which seems to be claimed to be used for a ball field. It's not going to be multiple use. And there's the basketball court. So this will be probably the only area that there will be Frisbees. They'll be, you know, playing uh, soccer. Um, I don't envision Little League games on it because that's a whole other, you know, setup. So my last question is lighting. Is, it, is the field lit so that, you know, lights that are high and, and that don't, blind people on the hillsides. It's a very sensitive issue, but you have to light the field. Yeah. Um, we would make sure, and, and that's a, a good observation. I know in, we have the problem right now in Gallows Bay. 
we turn on the lights down in Gallows Bay proper and the people that living up there, you know, but those things were erected and built, you know, before time. But we'll take that in, uh, into consideration. And that's the beauty about even the discourse and as we listen to you, that these are some of the things that we have to figure out how best to do that. I su suspect we'll be able to control the lighting in a fashion that wouldn't be, you know, disturbing folks all around. I think somebody, sorry. No, there will be regulated time. There can't be an open sepulchre. <laughs> no, I'm not being funny. I'm just saying that it has to be. People, if we want this thing to be right and to last, there have to be structure to what we do. What we do. And, and that's, <laughs> we know that we have to keep people there maintaining this thing every time. Um, sorry. Uh, good evening. I have two questions. Uh, question number one, would it be uh, wise to have more than just two entrances to the park? For example, one from each parking spot, because um, just for safety reasons and for you know easier of the access. So, so there's an access right here. There's an access over here. There's an access right here, and then there's one behind the, the stage. Okay, I just only need two uh, entrances. And second question is um, the area designated for special needs of Port Authority in the case of the disaster. Wouldn't be a good idea to uh, have it as a dual purpose, maybe use it for something else, and in the case of the disaster, use it for the disaster relief. So there are some uh, cases, like for example, we can designate it as the uh, dog park or some other facilities that could be used instead of just leave it empty. So we, we've actually reserved that space yeah. for day-to-day -day operations of the Port Authority. There are there are day-to-day -day needs in which additional lay-down area and staging space is required. So as a part of this and understanding some of the, the trade-offs that go into this, you know, instead of having the parking all the way around, we've just reserved a small portion of the parcel for, for those with the understanding that in the event of a disaster stage area being needed, that that okay. space as well. That's on, sorry, speak through this. That as well as um, the, the space that's reserved for Port Authority operations and the parking lot could be utilized. Um, thank you so much for all of y'all's effort in all of this. Good evening. Um, my one question is, do you envision the parking still being paid parking for this community facility? Thank you. I think all, every meeting Carlton Dow came to appear, I'm a frank and blunt individual. You're asking for a lot, and the community deserves a lot. But we have to keep people, custodian workers here, maintenance people here. So let's get the idea that this stuff is going. We have to be reasonable, but it's not going to be free. The Port Authority cannot, uh, the only way this could be free, if the legislature wants to make a determination that every year from the St. John Capital Improvement Fund, they're going to make whatever the number we believe we need to maintain this facility and be able to even replenish. So, so something goes wrong, a kid playing, that broke something, how does that get fixed? So, so let's get it out of our mind that everything or this parking is going to be free. We're going to try to figure out, come to some reasonable medium. We're billing, and, and you know, I travel a lot, all of us travel. I just came back from Miami. Go to an event, a sporting event, $35 to park. We go to these events, and I'm not saying you miss, I'm just talking generally now. People go to these events, they go out to this territory. Wherever the people tell you, wherever you go, you have to pay. We pay it, we smile, we had a good time. We've got to come out and understand that these things have cost. And we expect to maintain a facility. And that's the only way that Carlton Dow would advocate anything to be free. If from that fund, they're going to allocate that money every year. And not sometimes, every year. Because our employees have to be paid, the maintenance, and we could go on and on. So let's um, understand that. And you, right down in St. Thomas now, there used to be, just like you see the gravel lot, 
down there, that's what was in Red Hook. We built that two-story facility. We, 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 we struck a deal with the community, wanted to go three floors. The folks up on the hill say, you know, maybe our view is going to be a little obstructed. We struck a deal, we did too. You can't even have a place to park right now down there. And people pay, they pay the money. For the most part, we have employees working there, we go on. We have to secure the area as well. These police officers, you see up here, they're here because they look good. <laughs> they're here because we have to pay them to be here. So we expect that whatever we're doing and when we think about young people, you know, we've got to make sure that the environment is conducive for your children or grandchildren to come down to the park and don't worry about what, what's going to happen. So, folks, that free conversation, I think we need to end it tonight. Thanks. Hi. It works. Um, thanks for the presentation and for giving us the opportunity to meet and help guide the conversation. I have, I had a question about the parking, but in your response, I feel like with the kind of facilities you guys are proposing, there might be an opportunity with what you collect in revenue from maybe rents. Since these spaces, you're going to be doing RFPs and things like that, maybe some of what you collect in rent or revenue could subsidize parking and things like that. I just think there's an opportunity to find some sort of balance outside of just saying yes or no. Um, Wait, hold on. Next thing is I have a concern about safety. People walk that area a whole lot, and there's kind of a sidewalk across the street. But since this, is a, since this is new construction, I think you should take advantage of the opportunity to provide additional safe space. And so if you're going to put a fence around, I might suggest you in, uh, recess it a few feet so that that's also a space, a sidewalk space for people could traverse safely to and from town and other areas in that direction. I want to caution you to pay attention to things like noise pollution and light pollution for people who live in the area. Um, because it did come up at one of the last meetings from a resident, so that's something you really should consider going forward. Um, and then with the green surfaces, it got types of grass you could put in place that require no maintenance. All you got to do is cut it. A little bit of waterfall, it's full of life. So I don't think, if we're talking about future and sustainability and embedding these concepts in these kinds of projects, I think it's worthwhile to have them be as real as possible because that only reinforces what we're trying to do. We take your uh, comments, your suggestion. We look, the professionals would give us some idea what it would be best. We could, you know, ain't like, I remember when in some of you, when Sinbad were coming to St. Thomas, they brought in a trail and grass out the whole line at Robert Stadium. Um, and then we know that shortly thereafter, how the grass had looked. So, but there might be other grass that could think, and that's fine. We will look. We will try. We want it to be a, as real a, as possible and so forth. But um, I, I think I, I hear what you're saying. There, there will be concessions there. And I, do, I know that we wouldn't be able to charge the people that's doing it. It's half or one, six, a dozen at the next. We put the RFP and tell you your concession is X amount of price because we have to subsidize the parking. You know, I don't know that we, we, we could do a combination, but I'm telling you, folks, anything could happen. I, I work for a governing body, but Carlton Dow will not be advocating that the parking down there going to be for free. I'm being frank and uh, straight up. We could look at different combinations, but, but let's make up our mind that we have to pay something to keep this facility that we want. Um, do that first, and then, I'm going to, and then we're going to Madam Chair, okay? <laughs> Good evening. I want to acknowledge also all the people that worked on the committee. Um, and I had two questions. One is those white things on the lower right, is that like a water feature? Yes. For kids, For kids awesome. Um, and my other question is back to the very beginning, I kind of missed this. You mentioned that there were 10 recommendations from the committee and you incorporated Seven. six. So can you reiterate what the six were and what the four were that you left out? Yeah, so the, the four that were left out were a skate park, a small pavilion, a large pavilion, and then I'll, I'll make my way back so we can kind of go through the six as well. Um, but 
the majority of those, that was the top 10 of what was requested from the survey that was done by the subcommittee uh, from the community group. And as well as those six out of the top 10, we also incorporated five out of the next 10 as well. Um, so if the skate park was left out, I, I think that's a huge oversight. I'm understanding that it could be a real liability but it's a real need on St. John. Yeah, we, we understand the, the desire for that type of space here in St. John. Uh, however, in balancing the needs and the requests of everything else, there's just not the space to incorporate all of those items into this one parcel. Um, and so part of that ha has been the trade-off and, and kind of looking at the overall space and the types of smaller uh, spaces that we can utilize that, that met the, the requests from the community. So uh, the, the, ten top, the top 10 wants were a bike lane, a small pavilion, large pavilion, skate park. Those were the four that were not incorporated. Um, we did have conversations about the potential and the possibility of incorporating the bike lane around the exterior of the facility. And I think uh, what, what Kurt mentioned there in terms of uh, recessing that fencing, that would also open up an exterior bike lane that could be utilized and hardscaped. Um, so there's some potential that that one can be worked in here as well. And then the six that were incorporated were the walking track, the playground, the food court, which, which we took as uh, food vendors and uh, concession space in that area, as well as public art, an amphitheater, and green space. Good evening. Um, one second, one second, ma'am. If I may add to what Preston was saying, uh, sports parks is supposed to be doing some construction at their facility, and we are trying to keep in communication with them that we can perhaps possibly have that skate park right across the street from the community center itself. So, it, like I say, it's it's a give and take. We, we can't get it out. Okay, and I, I advocated for the skate park, but at some point you gotta throw in a towel. Hi. <clears throat> Good evening. Since the Festival Village is going to be in that area now, unlike where it used to be before, where it is not, is not completely surrounded by residents in that area, this is like a valley and it's completely surrounded by residents. And some people will have to go to work and stuff. Will there be a cut off time for functions? Like if you have a special artists or something coming in, will there be a special cut off time so that people who live in that area will not have to enjoy it all night long? Because people have to go to work, people have lives, people are probably sick. Will there be a cut off time where you will implement, um, Port Authority or maybe the administrator office will implement for, for functions? Well, there are, there are functions during the regular course of the year that would end at so a reasonable time. It's just like if you today figure maybe by 8 o'clock children are gone, whoever. There will be those kind of functions, but let's make no mistake in the community we live in. St. John is small, it's challenged. Even when, even in, in um, depending on how the wind blows, so folks who are living up the hill there can still hear the music. So that one week, Somehow that one week we will have to try to live with each other and understand. And you know, you know what would happen? <laughs> I was, we was talking to a, a lady. I was talking to a lady and she was saying that, you know, we, we've been holding Crown Bay in St. Thomas and the Frederick State Pair has now come the main event, uh, uh, destination to do major and large events. People up the hill sometimes, you know, would call us from time to time. But just for that one week of festival, we're going to have to try our best to harmonize and say, you know what, I'm going to enjoy it for the week. I ain't going to enjoy it all year. But let me just try to see how we could, you know, get, live and let live during that time. And I had to tell the lady, she says, I get a calypso blasting, lot of noise on my head. And then uh, about two weeks after, she, you know, why well, really wish I could hold? I can bring Court Franklin and have a big gospel, <laughs> you know. So you know, it's what is individual. So anyhow, we gonna bring Court Franklin, but we gonna bring a little calypso too, okay? 
I thank you for the question. Anybody else have a question? Uh, just to piggyback off of what you said, previously, you know, we have the village here in the creek. Those people have had to endure the noise year after year after year. So one of the things that we discussed in the meeting that we had was when we create the amphitheater, there's ways to avoid the sound traveling. So that's one of the things that we talked about, and I'm sure that they're going to take yeah. you know, into consideration. Thank you. We'll do our best, but you know, again, it's what it is. Um, anybody else? Sure. Sorry. Good evening, Fire Chief. <laughs> Good evening. First, I'd like to say thank you and well done, very well done, and thanks to Carmen and Steve and the, the group. Um, I just want to talk about the two-story parking because not everybody's going to be looking down from a hill. There are plenty of residents that are right at uh, eye line, sight line there. So I would hope that we could get some input from them about whether or not they want to be looking at the back of a garage. We will. We will continue to talk. We will con no, I'm serious. We will continue to, to, to talk about those things. We, um, you know, this is right in the people's backyard, to be honest with you, and that's another consideration. I like uh, tonight. Tonight is another night. The Port Authority are just really publicly, because we public, I want to really thank the staff that works with me, not for me, but works with me, because as we hear tonight, we still have employees that were there until um, about 2 o'clock this morning, pouring over um, close to 200 yards of concrete on the transportation center at the airport. As I speak tonight, they're pouring another 200 yards. So Port Authority is very active, and we want to. So this is not an exercise for us. This project, all of us, we have to see this happen. Good evening, Pam Richards. As a former chairman of the Port Authority, I want to assure you that this is unprecedented. This kind of input that we have been allowed hasn't happened before in any government agency that I'm aware of. And I want to thank Director Dow and your staff, especially Earl. You are charm. And I want to thank Carmen and Steve for leading us. And I want to thank all the people who came out all the time to give the input. I am completely satisfied. Um, this is more than I expected. I didn't expect that we would get that many g wishes granted, but trust me, this has never happened before, so we should be grateful for it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I, too, want to thank, um, I, I was going to leave that at some point, but, you know, um, my former colleague, Carmen Wesselhoff, and Steve Black, I was in the Senate and would get his phone call from some gentleman from St. John. One thing with Steve Black, he don't quit. <laughs> he don't quit. So this has been going on. I mean, as a senator, he's had a discussion with me about stuff like this. But a good thing, I tell people the difference with being in the Senate and um, being in a job like I, I have today, I talk to a governing body, and if I could convince that governing board, then it's up to us to do it. We don't have to wait or go through a whole rigmarole. We get it done. And that's, that's what we do every day. So you see all these projects we talk about rolling out right now, start with the dock, come with the, um, you know, the other project over here. Uh, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, good evening. My name is Aaron Payne. Um, I represent a youth soccer club here on St. John that we started about two years ago, uh, branching off of the Castaways program at Sapphire Beach. Uh, when talking about the green space and scheduling uh, league stuff, um, I've seen us grow in a year and a half from 22 kids to 82 youth from four years old to 14 years old. Is there going to be a central governing person, people to talk to, to schedule space? I think that would be an exceptional use of space for soccer individually. You have baseball, you have basketball. Is that something that we well, uh, would be able to do? This park should be able to accommodate most of of whatever, and um, we just want to know that we, we have staff that's going to be working there. Once we know you want to do um, you know, whatever the project might be in advance, then we could, could always arrange it. We're just cool. here to try to make sure that the public at large, especially those young people, have, an, uh, have nothing against the seniors. Seniors could go out, walk, bring their grandchildren, mm -hmm. hang out. But I'm just saying that it's a park that everybody could enjoy, and we don't have a problem doing that. 
you know, we don't, outside, outside the, the environment that we have, so conducive to be outside and be doing things outside regardless of age. And I continue to go to the water park that the Port Authority have. I could tell you, we open up the water park, it's very small. It's not a weekend. It's not a weekend that a park is not in use. And right next to it have a little basketball, they have a little green space. So people go down, they have the picnic, but that's in use every day and worse on the weekend. That's booked right up for the, the almost the entire year. That's how busy the small water park is. I'll um, take somebody else and then I'll come back to you. Um, some, Miss Wells, sorry. No, hold a second, Sushi, uh, Miss Wells. Sorry, go ahead. I'd like to ask about parking, especially disabled parking. Where is that or did I miss that? And about the bathrooms, where were they? So the, the bathrooms are in the facilities that are here and um, will be incorporated in that area as a part of the detailed design, as will uh, ADA accessible parking spaces. More than two or three. Uh, there's a, a exact formula that goes into the number of spaces, the usable uh, green space that, that calculates how many those are. <laughs> It, it I know, be more than two or three. I know about that, but I, I know how many spaces should be there depending on the size of the business or whatever, but It'll you know more. there are a lot of persons who locally and who come here and the disregard they have for disabled parking. It's abominable. So mm. I don't no. know how you're going to handle that, but it needs to be taken care of. My fucking all facilities that we built and what we're building down there, we have gone beyond what the requirement. The requirement could say uh, two or three spaces, we still could make more than that available. And we will do that, because taking into consideration the challenges, population. yeah, the population and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Hello again, a uh, couple more questions. The big building in the front with little white uh, umbrella spaces there, what all is gonna go in there? Can you clarify? So this is still conceptual at this point, but the idea is that there would be leasable space for concession and this is just one particular use, but then there would be the restroom facilities there as well. Would it be possible to incorporate some kind of open space that's sheltered? Um, it could even be open at the front for people to gather to meet. I mean, one of the things we've talked about is there's just no place to be out of the sun or out of the rain when we have some, you know, a, a little community group wants to get together can't use this facility. Yeah, so in this particular rendering, that was sort of envisioned as the upstairs facility that was there. Uh, it was intended to be open air, but enclosed and uh, covered mm -hmm. for, for that sort of uh, exact uh, function. Great. But uh, again, that'll be kind of assessed throughout the design phase, uh, understanding that all of these requirements and requests uh, will be worked in as much as possible w within the allocated budget. Great, and then of course you need handicap mm -hmm. ramps for that, which takes up a fair amount of space. Correct. Another thing, I think I heard you say at the beginning that people wanted to have fencing around the um, entire project. And f I remember the meetings that I attended, the concern was that the people were very unhappy with the present fencing that's going around the gravel lot. So I'm wondering what you have in mind for this would it be just something low, or are you talking about high security? Yeah, that would need to be, we're going to determine that with our safety and security officers who are also going to be securing and, and patrolling the area as a part once the project is rolled out. Uh, and, and we'll incorporate that with our best practices that we utilize at our other facilities of similar nature. Mm -hmm. And one final, just a little comment. I think if you're going to have hard space and you don't have a skate park, you're going to have a skate park. <laughs> I know as a young side skate waterfront till my <laughs> went over. But yeah, um Senator Pato, come a minute no man. Come. I asking him to come up. I always try to keep senators kinda close to me, I know why. <laughs> Good evening. Say something to the people. First of all, we want your support, continue to support. Don't touch the St. John Capital Improvement Fund. This is where this money is coming from. <laughs> so yeah. Yes sir, yes sir. Good evening everybody. Good evening. I must say that since 2023, since 12 o'clock midnight 2023, something has been coming in my mind over and over again, and is this African proverb. 
that says, if we, and I've been hearing it more and more lately, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So I was very, very pleased that Mr. Dow and the Port Authority team incorporated the ideas of the St. John community. That is, to me, it's going to assure us that this project goes far and that it is something that's lasting and it's going to get the support of the entire St. John community. I was very, very pleased to see the large number of St. Johnians who came out to voice their ideas and their support of this initiative. Uh, it says a lot. You know, very often we have events and activities and public hearings and you don't hear anything. You hear from folks after the fact something is done and everybody's complaining that you didn't incorporate my ideas. So I'm very pleased that you're open to the ideas of the community. Uh, it says a lot. I think this project is a classic example of the possibilities of what we can do with the Capital Improvement Fund. You know, we can do something that's tangible, that's going to uh, positively impact the quality of life of St. Junians. And it's not just some vague use that you never really realize, you never really understand how the funding is used. So I'm hoping that we can work together with this community using the same model to do additional projects and initiatives that will benefit, that will improve the quality of life for all St. Julians. So thank you very much for inviting me and I look forward to working with you in the future, in the foreseeable future. I know you have one at large person, one at large representative, but as a St. Thomas, St. John Senator, you have seven other uh, senators who are a part of your district. So I welcome, I have an open door policy. I welcome your thoughts, your ideas, and what we can do to improve the quality of life for all St. Julians. Thank you very much, Mr. Dove. Thank you, uh, Senator Potter. And I'll be remiss if I don't recognize the 16th Senator of the Virgin Islands. Stand up, James. <laughs> that is that is 16th Senator. Anyhow, anybody else have a couple questions? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure if I missed it, and I don't think I can see it from the rendering. On the green spaces over on this side, are there like benches and or tables? Like if you're picnicking and your kids are on the yarn thing, that's what that is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some right there, and then there will be more incorporated into the project. Oh, okay, okay. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to say congratulations to Carmen and Mr. Black and the rest of the team for making this possible, and also Mr. Dow for always being an advocate for making things happen on St. John. My basic question is, is it possible that we can have a meeting where we can incorporate the youths on St. John, some of them, a specific amount to get their input and their ideas as to what they would like to see happen. Um, believe it or not, our kids, they are the ones that's going to be using this facility. They are the ones that is going to need the assistance for a lot of things that's going to happen in the facility. And if possible, we can hear from them, I think would make a tremendous difference. I'll tell, tell you what we'll, hold, hold on. Um. Yeah, so um, there was a survey done and the school children gave vast input. That's how we got Passion Fruit Park. That's how we got a lot of ideas. It came from the youth of St. John, so that's already taken care of, okay? Every, everyone was involved. They, they touched every corner of St. John, I must be honest. Okay. Yes, Sherry, you came in a little late, but the survey was um, in Sprout School. We handed out to the students in Sprout School, and they participated in the survey. 
But I know you came in late. But I just have one question if I, would, if so, I could ask the St. John community. Are we pleased? I know we have a lot of questions, but are we satisfied? <laughs> all right. That's all I want to know, if, if we satisfy with what we're seeing here tonight. Thank you. A um, couple more questions. Yes. I just had a comment about the green space and if we can grow grass on St. John. Um, people might want to check out the green stuff, I guess I'll call it, that they're putting in the National Park um, playground. It's, it's not grass, um, but it's for the playground there, and you might want to feel it, touch it, see what you think about it, if it would be appropriate. It's something you can touch and see what you think and give feedback. Thanks, thanks. We, we will we'll check. I mean, we're to a point where all those things we would, we want to do whatever it's going to take to have us maintain and it don't just die out the next day. And Mr. Marsh indicated there is some, some grass or something that they know don't take a lot to, um, to keep going. And so we'll look at it. We'll really try to fi figure out what's the best. And if we make an error along the way uh, with something like that park or grass, then we'll just have to, whether we have to take it up and do something a, a, a again. But we'll go. Anybody else have a question? Good evening. <laughs> Good to see you too. That's a former co worker. In another life, I used to um, be the fire chief here. So I know all those guys, Calvin and company. Yeah, now we have the fire chief here. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, anybody else have a question? Sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good evening. I wonder, is there a rough estimated uh, timeline for when this project might be completed? Is it five years, <laughs> seven years? I'll, I'll answer that first and I'll give it to you, Preston. Okay. <laughs> will, will our kids get to see it or will they be uh, if what? us? By, you know? Well, I don't know you, you don't know me. But my time is down now. And, and I'll add a dose of reality that this is not going to happen overnight. Um, however, um, as a part of the kind of the overarching planning process here, we've identified uh, that the, the core structural components and the main facilities are going to be kind of the longest lead items and that the uh, overall site plan, design, grading, drainage, lighting, utilities, all of those not very fun things for non-engineers that go into this. Um, that entire process is approximately a nine-month design process. Um, we're looking at starting that um, based on the feedback from tonight uh, very quickly within the next couple of months. Then we'd be looking at a nine-month process. And then with reviews, permitting, this will go to CZM. Um, that component of this is usually a, a two to three month process as well. And then procurement um, will, will be a, a two to three month process there as well. So realistically, what we've been targeting is that this facility will be ready for festival in 2025. It won't, it won't have all aspects and all components, but the green space and the area there, that is the intent and the, the timeline that we're targeting at this point. Um, question. While I know it's not directly on the park, I mean, um, Port Authority property, but there is a serious problem with the sewage that runs on, uh, that runs, smells really horrible, runs the, on the road that is part of pro, um, Port Authority and can affect that area because this whole, especially that area by the entrance. Are you working with, um, I guess you guys are working with um, waste management and to, do, to deal with that, that when people are trying to enjoy the facility that they are not bombarded with that smell because the flooding, the, the, the sewage just running all over the place. I mean, sewage water and stinge running all over the place. So my understanding is that the community group reached out to waste management and hosted Executive Director Merritt as a part of that. And I believe in that session he kind of touched on what the Waste Management Authority's plan for that area and taking care of that is. Yeah. 
So we'll, we'll work in concert, and, and we have an open dialogue with the Waste Management Authority, and we will continue to, to collaborate on that, um, recognizing that that falls outside of the purview of this project, although it will have an impact on the, on the usable space that, that we're looking to create. And the same goes for the drainage concern. We've had conversations with the Department of Public Works, um, understanding the area immediately adjacent here um, to the facility has some, some serious concerns. And so part of that it kind of worked itself into us trying to grade and raise the site a little bit so that it wouldn't be impacted by that flooding that, that happens along there. Hello again. Um, so I'm wondering if you have an overall concept of the budget and also an overall concept of the funding source. Yeah, so the overall budget and, and really what we've shown here today, the two structures as well as the amphitheater are the main drivers of cost on this one. Um, going from design to construction on those three facilities as you see them today would be in the range of $4 million and that the remainder of the site work and utility would be in the range of an additional $4 million that would get the, the space usable. Um, that's a rough order of magnitude at this point, but that's what we're basing on the, the programmatic elements that we've incorporated, as well as the, the design uh, we believe to be in, in the range of four to $500,000 to make that all a reality. Um, as of today, we do have uh, approximately $360,000 remaining out of the $400,000 that were allocated for the design of this facility to progress this design towards a, a bid package and solicitation package. And then the remaining work um, has yet to be funded uh, at this stage. I suspect that's where the governing body of the Port Authority and myself comes in and, and, and the entire process. Um, we'll figure the part out, trust me. We're not, this is not an exercise where we're going to be stuck and saying how we're going to do this. This, this has to happen. You know, St. John can't go no longer with all this kind of stuff. This has to happen. <laughs> you know? There's a lot of ways that, that we could look at. Some of the highest property taxes is right there in St. John. It has to happen. Anybody else have a, yes, ma'am? maybe all of the meetings that you've had, but I live in that neighborhood, and I'm just wondering, you may have said it and I missed it, the park where, the parking lot where most of the activities took place for the festival orga organization, no longer? Everything is gonna be moved there? Are you still gonna have some activities in that location well, in the parking lot? Yes. No, when, uh, it's our intent when we do this, um, that parking lot would no longer be used for the festival activities. That don't mean somebody want to, i just saying somebody want to have a food sale or do something in that area. It's going to be an open property anyhow, controlled by the port. And, and to be quite frank with you, one of the reasons why it's kind of chaotic, we leave people park, we don't really hassle you, and on and on, it's because of the, the environment now and the situation. But when we get down to the, uh, the gravel lot going, then we have to organize things much better. Somebody coming in and need to go to the post office should not have to compete with somebody who who gone, to, gone to St. Thomas for the whole day. Those things can't be fair. But we allow some of these things only because of the circumstances now don't permit. But um, when we do that, we expect to transition into a whole different way in which we operate at least in our facilities. Those are what we're speaking for what the port um, can control. So when you see somebody gone Miami for the weekend and they leave the car on there, ain't like we don't know. But it's just that because of the circumstances, we just let it go um, for this time. Yeah. Anybody else? Could take a couple more questions. And oh. Thank you and good evening. Good evening. Um, as I was saying, I might have been late, but I want to reiterate if it hasn't already been said about the flooding. <laughs> the flooding in that area is extreme. The entire hill behind us 
is the hydraulic waterfall that runs down there under the ground. It is intended to go there. The pipe that the government put in, the exhaust is there from that uh, hill that comes down the road and center line. The water accumulates because the drain is of such that it cannot get into what is now the remainder of the pond. The pond originally existed from behind the firehouse, all of where the tennis court is, that was the pond. So the area has been reconfigurated over many years. And having this now, which I think is a good idea, but we have to do something so you could get to it. Because when it rains, you cannot get to it. Yeah, well, what I'll tell you, though, is we're not doing this in a vacuum. Um, okay. they, right. they, 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 um, we have a lot of faith in first these two gentlemen are engineers. Um, they're working closely. We have the Port Authority and probably unlike a lot of others, the Port Authority, every few years, we go out and literally look for a bid to have uh, an engineering team that's on staff, that's not government employees for none of us. These are private sector people that comes together with our own engineers. Uh, what, what you guys have reinforced tonight which we have started a process is to really go deep and hard with public works, with waste management and understanding. We can't do this alone. They have a role to play and we have to bring everybody, uh, we, we've talked to them before, but they're gonna have, we're gonna have to have those real commitment from those institutions and organizations to make this work well. We shouldn't, uh, you know, I've been here too. I mean, of course you know that. I've been here with the flooding, with all this kind of stuff, I get a phone call. I ran the fire department in case some of you don't know for umpteen years. I was 25 years old when I was the fire chief here. So I'm saying to you, I've been here, I've done that, I've seen it, you know, seen a lot of what we go through. And we definitely have to bring all those pieces together. The good thing for me is I have a meeting, I think is next week with, um, with the folks from Waste Management. And they have a big ask of us, right, President? Okay, good. <laughs> so... I think we have some. We'll talk to them, though, to try to make. This has to be happening at this, you know, in concert. We can't go to the port doing this and spending all this money, and then they have to go back to dig up something because they wasn't prepared. We all have to do this at the same time. One set of digging, and let's go. We'll just take a couple more questions. Yes, Mr. Rotnick. You brought up a very interesting point, which is cooperation from the rest of the government. And I'm sure you got the governor's support on this. But the real difficult spot between that and Cruz Bay is the fire station. There's no sidewalks. So if you're going to go to that, you have to walk in the street. And it is the main thoroughfare, thoroughfare through there. So um, as the fire department, is that going to move the facility and then we could make a sidewalks and, and a way to get through there? I, I honestly don't know that. Okay, but I mean, I, I don't want to go too far off track, but, but I mean, this is, this is stuff that reasonable people could walk out. If it's going to be rebuilt, then part of the rebuilding could, ne could very well be doing some access, sidewalk, whatever. You don't have to move out, but it could be, you know... We, Incorporated, we, it, yeah. yeah, so. yeah well, that's it. It's just that, that spot is where you force everyone to walk on the road. So if you have children with you, if you got a, uh, maybe a carriage, good, whatever, you know? Maybe a good thing would be um, the, the Commissioner of Public Work is a Port Authority board member. We will um, address it with him, but at the same time, you, just like we're doing now, hopefully maybe you, you could invite them to come and have this... This, re this discussion with you as well, you know. Thank you. Thank you to Commission. We'll take about a couple more questions. And Good evening. Good evening. I'm just uh, going to say that your suggestion about incorporating the, uh, the bike trail 
since it's going to be fenced, is that a great idea. If you expand it a little bit, maybe even the skaters can use it, huh? Yeah, they could skate between the bikes. <laughs> 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 Come on, I mean, we could, we, we, listen, I think the part, if you're going to have a hard surface yeah. out there, I guess the folks, children do what children must do. <laughs> so you could, we don't have to call it a, we don't call it a skate rink. The children, you know, I, I saw some guys in the Emancipation Garden, we don't have no place for no skateboard. But they all through the emancipation in Tonga, all the people in post office going up on the ramp, sliding on the rail, you know. But um, anybody else have a couple questions? And then we, I just want to recognize the, one of the people that um, have a bunch of staff here. Um, Joey, raise your hand. That's the marine manager. And um, so he, yeah, for the district. And then uh, Mr. Blackwood someplace here, I think I said. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so that's Mr. Blackwood. He runs things up here in St. John. And then we get, any other staff, I stand up quick. Because I don't want to be any, well, that, the gentleman who's running around with the microphone, that's our IT person, that's uh, Mr. Rush. Um, to my left is uh, Ms. President. She runs the uh, parking lot in St. Thomas, in Red Hope. Um, huh? St. Thomas, St. John. Yeah, well, she in charge <laughs> at the parking. That's Ms. President. Um, anybody else over here? Um, that's Lute, um, the manager at the Red Hook facility. That's Mr. Hughes. Uh, behind of him is Lieutenant Smith. And that's Chief Wilkes. Sergeant Holder. Why name Sergeant Holder, Harley? Oh, Sergeant Holder. <laughs> <laughs> just messing, just messing. But that's Sergeant Holder. Um, he's normally stationed in St. John. And... Um, well, oh, Dale. <laughs> Man, stand up again. <laughs> That's Dale Gregory. That's our um, senior uh, well, assistant director of engineering. Uh, if anybody knows the nuts and bolts of St. John or anything in the Port Authority, he knows that well. That's Dale Gregory. Stand up again. It's Dark Master. Uh, Penn. Okay. Penn and. Yeah. Your whole, <laughs> a whole government name. <laughs> anybody else uh, we have? Okay, Vona, she has an old mass. Um, Vona Thomas, she's one of the property managers. She works out at Crong Bay. So when you want to use, that's when we're talking about Crong Bay, the facility, very, very active, a lot of events from Carnival to Christmas being used. The same thing, we've opened up our facilities to the public. Um, Frederick said now, they want to hold a concert, whether jazz, whatever, it's happening at our pay in Frederick Stead. They pay a pretty good fee to use it. Um, and that's Kate, and I'm glad she's here, Kate Davis, because that's the person who controls all of our procurement stuff. So when something goes out to bid, something goes out to bid, you don't call me. That's who it is. Okay? So we, we make, oh, you call Julius. Oh, stand up, Julius. Stand up. And, um, She need no introduction, right? <laughs> that's, um, that's the Port Authority. That's my chief of staff, Julius um, Harley Holder. Your father tell me I always say Harley. <laughs> Just kidding, Holder. <laughs> but that's um, Julius. Um, she, again, whether it's in John or not, you call her, you could get a good answer. She's very um, receptive and always willing to w work and help people. And that's money from Marrero Bradford, that lady you hear from all the time with her Facebook. Um, you know, our, our press releases and so forth. And you'll be hearing from us all the time because as we do these projects, as we get into certain phases, we want to we at least let the public know that, hey, we're starting this project, what to expect along the way. So that's Ms. Um, Moreira. And I just wanted to recognize um, the Wizard of Oz, Mr. Mario Kinder. Where is he? <laughs> come, Mario, come. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, um, that's... Where he is? Come, Maria. Come, Maria. <laughs> Just leave the tech to the young people. Eh? <laughs> so, yeah, he, he have us talking to the right now. We talk to the, to the entire world. The funniest thing is I don't even leave her. Go to my sister. She's in Miami, and she could come and tell me everything what happened. I say, you, you ain't in St. Thomas. Keep out of our thing now. That, that's Mr. Pender. 
I'll take two more questions um, for Preston or for all. I think I spoke a lot tonight. Preston or all, and then I really appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. How Mr. soon can we get uh, copies of this? We'll post it tomorrow. Tomorrow, it'll be on the Port Authority's website, viport.com. It's a big file. We'll post the link on the main page, so you won't have to go searching for it. viport.com will be right there. And what we pride ourselves on, and um, some of you have heard, we are undertaking a big project in St. Thomas, this public-private partnership to try to rebuild our boat airport. But what we have done is consistently come to the public with um, on a press conference. We, di we did the same thing and come and at least share information, get the feedback. Um, up to today was on the public airways. We expect to do that because we want the people to be confident in the process from the beginning to the end. The only agenda the Port Authority have is simply to upgrade these facilities and make them something that all of us could say that we are St. Johnians, we are Virgin Islanders, and that people could use these facilities and feel comfortable in, in, in using them. I, I, for me, I just love, when I come to St. John, I, I hate to tell you the truth, I just love to be able to just walk in the street like I really free. <laughs> This was, it'll make me feel like I'm really free. I'll just walk up the dock and walk up the street. Maybe I want to taxi driver will be blowing to come out of the way, but. <laughs> the show, yeah. Anyhow, again, on behalf of the Virgin Islands Port Authority, our governing body, which is about um, we seven members, I really appreciate the fact that you guys, eight? Okay. Oh, just seeing if you're paying attention. <laughs> but. So that um, you know, all of us could be here today, and we'll continue. When we get off of this part, like we're springing off of this tonight, our next phase would be with our Moffitt and Nichols to start to actually draw, design what it's going to be like, meets and bongs and so forth. That will take a while, but we will keep you abreast and informed every step of the way. Thank you, and good night. Thank you.